Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. FW-190 makes first flight. Lilium jet test flight. An Enstrom helicopter celebrates 60 years. Happy Friday and welcome to the show. I'm Sophie Herlock, a folk wolf FW-190 belonging to the Tri-State Warbird Museum in Cincinnati, Ohio, made its first flight back on November 12th. The flight is the culmination of a project that has been underway for several years. The plane was built around the nameplate of an FW-190 F-8, which was shot down in 1944. It was manufactured by Arado Company, which was one of the several companies building FW-190s during the war. This nameplate was salvaged together with other parts and shipped to the U.S. in 2000. Rebuilding around a nameplate reportedly makes the airplane a genuine FW-190 and not a replica. Some modifications to the aircraft were necessary, as an original engine was not available. Installation of a Pratt & Whitney R857M2 made a change to the upper cowling necessary. The project was donated to the Tri-State Warbird Museum in 2007. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Today is a new dawn. With a new name. Un nuevo logotipo. A new factor. Und einem globalen Kundenfokus. We are Continental Aerospace Technologies and we stand behind you. Welcome back. It's time for today's trip around the patch. The final months of the 2019 fiscal year proved to be the most challenging and rewarding quarter yet for Tyndall Air Force Base when the June 2019 Supplemental Appropriations for Disaster Relief Act increased the installation's annual budget by a massive 450 percent. Under the act, O&M funding assigned $56 million to sustain regular base operations, with an additional $358.4 million allotted for Hurricane Michael recovery under the facility's sustainment rest restoration modernization designation. Gulf Stream Savannah-based fleet has flown more than 1 million nautical miles on sustainable aviation fuel. Since March of 2016, Gulf Stream has used sustainable aviation fuel for its corporate demonstration customer support, and flight test fleets. The company has made more than 550 flights with the blended fuel and reduced carbon dioxide emissions by approximately 1,300 metric tons. In a compromise move, Congress approved a defense policy bill that creates a new space force. The new service was included in exchange for the establishment of paid parental leave for federal workers. The 2020 National Defense Authorization Act redesignates the Air Force Space Command as the Space Force, a sixth branch of the armed forces. Delta Airlines is rejoining industry trade organization Airlines for America. Delta left the association in 2015 over several issues, including the proposal to separate ATC from the FAA. Now Delta CEO Ed Bastain says the airline is looking forward to rejoining the association and working jointly with other airline members to address issues that impact our people, our customer, and the communities we serve. We'll be right back with the rest of the news.
Lilium Jet released a video of a three minute test flight that was conducted back on October 1st. The flight performed controllability tests and looked specifically at how the aircraft performs during bank turns and transition flight. The aircraft completed a rough figure eight during the flight, with the left turn being the specific test point for this flight. During this left turn, the aircraft banks first at 20 degrees angle of bank for approximately 90 degrees, heading change before increasing the angle of bank to 30 degrees for the remainder of the turn. The right turn was just for repositioning before landing and did not target a specific angle of bank. The flight also demonstrated the aircraft completing a vertical takeoff and landing, climbing and descending at a rate of 300 feet per minute and cruising at 35 knots. Since this test, Lilium has successfully flown the aircraft at higher speeds, recently reaching the 100 kilometers per hour milestone, and has completed the first phase of testing. Enstrom Helicopter is celebrating its 60th anniversary this week. Enstrom has grown to become a storied aerospace manufacturer, having produced more than 1,300 aircraft operated in over 50 countries around the world. Rudy Enstrom was a mining engineer in Crystal Falls, Michigan, who dreamed of building his own helicopter. He had never actually seen one in person, but he didn't let that stop him, and throughout the 1940s and 50s, he constructed a number of prototypes in his garage, hovering them in a local quarry. The late 70s were the heyday for general aviation production, and Enstrom would build more than 100 aircraft per year out of its tiny factory. Unlike a lot of small aircraft companies, Enstrom survived the great general aviation bust of the 80s and went on to develop the 480 series turbine helicopters in the 1990s. The company now produces the popular turbocharged Piston F-28F and 280FX siblings, and the Turbine 480B. And that wraps up our week, everyone. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click subscribe and to check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. To stay up to date on the latest aviation and aerospace news this weekend, head over to aero-news.net. I'll see you Monday.